Hey, me, me, what am I doing? Oh, hey me, I'm making a video about signal to noise ratio in astrophotography. I can't do that. I already made one not too long ago. Yeah, but this one will be super interesting. I promise me. I don't believe me. But please me, tell me what I'm going to do. Remember my signal to noise ratio app? Yeah, my app is pretty cool. Well, I'm going to show people exactly what different signal to noise ratios look like. Oh, I like my idea. Welcome, Welcome to, to Deep, Deep Sky Detail. Detail. I made an online tool that you can use to estimate the signal to noise ratio of your astro images. It also tells you how many stacked subframes you'll need to get a signal to noise ratio that you want. In that video, I said this. You'll also need to specify what you want your signal to noise ratio to be. A good rule of thumb is that 30 is mediocre, 60 is good, and 90 is really pretty good. But what is a mediocre SNR of 30 look like anyway? And what is one of the biggest problems in all of science? Yeah, we'll get into that, I promise. I'm not even joking. Before I answer that though, maybe you're new to astrophotography and you don't know what stacking is. If you already know what stacking is, skip to this timestamp if you want. Well, everything in the night sky is really faint. It's hard to photograph stuff. Even a long exposure of say five minutes might have more randomness in it than the light from the nebula in some parts of the image. That's because of light pollution or even just the camera sensor randomly thinking it detected a photon when it hasn't. This random stuff is noise. So we take multiple images of the same target. Each image we take is called a subframe. When we stack the subframes together in software, the stacking smooths things out and gets rid of the noise. What really happens under the hood is software aligns all the images you took using the stars as reference points. The software then averages all the images together. The averaging gets rid of the noise. Nice. Consequently, the signal to noise ratio or SNR goes up, which is good. The signal to noise ratio is simply that. It calculates how much signal you have in an image and divides it by the noise. More on that in a minute. Let's just quickly visualize what stacking does. I've got five subframes from the Fleming Star Nebula open in GIMP. Each layer is a subframe. Let me make all the layers invisible except for the bottom layer. And let's zoom in. It's pretty noisy. But if I make the second layer visible and turn the opacity of that layer down to 50%, you can see that some of the noise goes away. I am in effect averaging the two subframes. With a third subframe, I'll turn down the opacity to 33%, the fourth to 25%, and the fifth to 20%. Now I've essentially stacked five subframes and I've started to control the noise. The noise goes down, increasing the SNR. So what does an SNR of 30 actually look like, or 40? To answer that question, we first have to figure out how we'll calculate the SNR. In a perfect world, we could find the SNR of each pixel in an image. The numerator is our signal, and that is just the brightness of the pixel in a subframe. Let's call it B1. For one pixel in one subframe, there is no way to get a noise measurement experimentally. We need at least two subframes. So what we do is stack another subframe to get an average brightness for the pixel. We then take this average brightness, we'll call it B2. The noise is just the standard deviation of B1 and B2. We'll call this standard deviation SD2. I know we don't have an SD1, but let's keep things consistent in terms of the numbers with our B measurement. Don't know what a standard deviation is? Well, you can think of it as a measurement that tells us how far away B1 and B2 are from the average of B1 and B2. It's sort of like an average difference from the arithmetic mean, but slightly more complicated. The SNR then is just B2 divided by SD2. We then repeat this by adding another subframe. The average brightness of three subframes is B3. We then calculate the standard deviation for B1, B2, and B3. The pattern repeats and the SNR for a single pixel is BN divided by SDN. Nice. All right, so I have 57 subframes for IC405. 
the Fleming Star Nebula. Each subframe is a five minute exposure using the equipment pinned in the comments below. To calculate the SNR for every pixel in the image, 57 times is pretty computationally intensive. I probably don't have enough RAM to do this, so let's just take a sample of part of the image. This part looks good. It has some bright and dark areas. I like it. We'll take the SNR of each pixel in this area and then average the SNR of all the pixels to see what the 30 SNR looks like. Here's the code. Let me run it. Wait a minute. The advanced astrophotographers out there are probably going to say something like, there are stars in the image. We don't care about the SNR for those really, just the nebula. They'll throw off our SNR measurement. To that I'd say, man, you got me. What should we do then? Well, I see two simple options. Option one is just to ignore it. The stars take up a small area of our sample and won't affect the average SNR too much. Option two is to use the median brightness instead of the arithmetic mean when stacking. The median or middle brightness value is less affected by outliers than the arithmetic mean. The stars will have a negligible effect on our SNR measurements this way. Let's use option two. All right, let's figure out the SNR for each stacked image and graph it. Oh no, after 57 stacked images, the average SNR is less than 20. That can't be right. Let's look at the result of 57 stacked images and compare it to one subframe. The stack is so much better. What happened? Is the SNR really less than 20? Well, my SNR estimator app says it should be closer to 45. What the happened? Well, I think I know what happened. I also know how to fix it. Let me explain how to fix it. We calculated the noise incorrectly. Instead of taking the standard deviations of each pixel, let's take the standard deviation of the whole part of the sample for a subframe. We'll call this new standard deviation, new SD1. We'll then stack another subframe and find the standard deviation for the stack of two images and call it new SD2. We'll repeat and record each new standard deviation for the stack. Interestingly, None of these new standard deviations are our noise measurement though. What we need to do is take the standard deviation of the standard deviations as we stack. So for two stack subs, the noise measurement will be the standard deviation of new SD1 and new SD2. This new noise measurement, our cumulative standard deviation, is a much better way of doing things. Why you ask? Well, I'll explain in a bit. Okay, so for our corrected noise measurements, the stack of 57 subs has an SNR of about 45. Amazing, it matches the predictions of the app. Who knew? But what about an SNR of 30? You know, the number that my thumb said was mediocre? Well, this is what that looks like. It only takes 17 subs to get there. You can see it looks okay. There's structure, but it's still quite noisy still. An SNR of 45 is almost good, a lot less noise. Let's look at a nice animation that shows each image as it's stacked and its corresponding SNR. But what about an SNR of 60 or 90? What do those look like? Give me a second, I need to find another image first and do the calculations. While I'm doing that, let's examine why getting the SNR of individual pixels is so problematic. The reason is probably one of the biggest problems in science, for real. It all has to do with not correctly calculating the noise due to correlations between variables. What does that even mean? In simple terms, what we are measuring, in this case the individual pixels in one subframe, are not independent from each other. This is bad. It inflates the noise. Let's visualize. Let's first assume that all the pixels are independent of each other. We'll take 10 pixels and graph their true average brightness in yellow, and the y-axis is their true brightness value. Now let's plot the pixels from just one subframe in blue. I'll leave the true brightness faded in the background as a reference. This one measurement is off a bit, as to be expected. The difference from the true value is part of the noise. Now let's plot the brightness for other subframes. As you can see, each subframe has a slightly different measurement. It's noisy. But what if a high level cloud interferes with one of my subframes? It will make all the pixels darker for that sub. The effect of the clouds dims all the pixels almost equally. These atmospheric differences between the subframes increases the noise, but it does so artificially. 
When we average the subframes, these effects largely go away, as long as they're not too big. But we don't know that when we just measure each pixel by themselves. Let's just examine the animation of one pixel. See how it jumps all over the place when the atmospheric effects are left in? Now let's take those out. It doesn't jump around as much anymore. The amount of jumping is the noise. The noise measurement without the atmospheric effects is a lot less. The fact that measurements are correlated is actually one of the biggest problems in science. It throws off statistical tests and models and can lead to bad conclusions. That's one reason scientists train for years to be able to detect these problems. And even then, they get it wrong sometimes. Okay, so I promised I'd show you what an SNR of 60 and 90 look like. Let's finally take a look. I found some data of the Orion Nebula and calculated things similarly to the Fleming Star Nebula. Here is what 30 looks like, just for reference. Here is 60 and here is 90. With 30 average SNR, you can see detail, but there is noise spread around the image, especially in the mid and darker parts of the nebula. With 60 average SNR, the image really cleans up, especially in the midtones, but there is still some noise in the darkest regions. Most of it is very smooth though. With 90 average SNR, there is only slight improvement in the midtones, but the darkest regions clean up nicely. In my opinion, based on everything we've calculated in this video, around 50 to 60 average SNR for your target is a sweet spot, especially if you have limited imaging time. You'll get good detail, but keep in mind that the more SNR you get, the more the fainter parts of your target will start to pop. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out this one I made on color, context, and astrophotography, or this one that the algorithm recommends. Thanks for watching.